but I love this song, and it's not a bad picture in your television right now either. James Leisure, ladies and gentlemen, he plays Mike uh, on the fabulous TV show Mike Cannon in Vegas. Uh, Las Vegas, of course, we know it, and we're all gearing up for his premiere this season, uh, this week in its fifth season. And many people know you from the short-lived Studio 60 on the Sunset Strip. You played Captain Boyle. See, <laughs> tested yeah. you, yeah. tested good, you. Good. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the show, James. How are you? Thanks for you? And we need to say, local boy, like yeah. born, raised, educated, all right here in right the beautiful here. city of Los Angeles. Home 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 Boys, Home Boys, Home Boys, Home Boys. Sam could be happier about that. Do it again, one more time. How was that? What was that? Well, I was just, you know, we were doing the singing. That's how we do it. We're doing, yeah. That's how we do. That's how we do. It looks like you're playing on the keyboard. Oh well, I'm not going to So did this is how we do it. the season I'm totally into. Vegas. Yeah, in fact, about, you right. sat down and started to grill James the, on the, the show. The season finale was like, how did she get, did she get out of the box? You gotta, <laughs> they you put gotta for Vanessa Marcel in a box. Oh, man. And then they wheel her well, out of the casino. Fatigued. She, she is, is little. Fatigued. She is low. So it's and he's that, chasing that after her. The box is put into a private plane. <laughs> and he's running after the plane. Right. Stop the plane. <laughs> but does it happen? Who knows? You know, do you, you, you know if you have little show. kids and they're very excited about telling you something yeah. and they're trying to explain themselves, you kind of have a show like that. It's my first first. TiVo Cho, where Is I learned really? to TiVo. Oh, I love really? that show. Right. I really do. Give right, right, Give right here. <laughs> Give it to him. Sam. One more time. Sam. <laughs> hey, he won't do it again. Oh, all right, we've got James all prepared on how this nine o'clock show rolls out. So hang on, yeah. enjoy the ride. Everybody yeah. ready? It's He's, a roller coaster. That, I'm jumping that, in. He said the nicest thing. He goes, "It seems very complicated." We're like, "No, no." no. <laughs> Thanks for playing. It does. There's a lot going on here. But there is, a, there is a lot going on. Yet yeah. not. Uh, we're gonna jump into a story that. <laughs> We're going to jump into a story that is very local and is obviously something on the minds of many parents. A new investigation shows Los Angeles is building more and more schools near freeways despite a law that actually forbids it. This report in today's Los Angeles Times reveals L.A. Unified is adding seven new schools that will stand really close really close to interstates where pollutants can loom. There is a 2003 state law that actually prohibits school districts from building campuses within 500 feet of a freeway unless the district can ease pollution and there's no other space available. Space limitations, of course, as I mentioned, are another exception. School officials say they have no choice at this point but to build near freeways because there's such a shortage of land. Critics say they are concerned about children's health. And in fact, as a perfect example, Right across the street, there's a Biggest brand new school high school ever. going, and it is literally abutted right against the freeway. This the is a serious, serious concern. Uh, I mean, well, it's, it's sort of it's sort of like pick your poison, and in, yeah. in a way, you can't fault. I, I don't think you can fault the LAUSD, though you can fault them for many other things. There's another brand new, beautiful school. I think we did a story about it on the 10 freeway, j just south of Crenshaw. I mean, where are you going to get large parcels of available land right. in Southern California? And the Seven. problem is that the, the schools are so overcrowded. We've talked about this before. Up through the third. Grade, it's state mandated 20 kids per class in public schools after that the number is you know swells to 35 or beyond or more yeah and and the kids you know are just jam it's standing room only in some classes we oh. need this school construction and it is pick your poison but then it, let's talk about the poison Frank a report released in February says that children who live near freeways are more likely to suffer from decreased lung yeah. function that's living well, if you're spending what six to eight hours a day in a schoolroom you might as well be living next to a freeway Way because that's a good amount of time, and those young developing lungs ingesting that kind of toxin, yeah. that, I mean, that's going to have an effect. Maybe it's uh, kind of a good way for us to get a little bit more green yeah. than in the areas, and I mean, since we're right across the street, hey, why not? Yeah, we <laughs> can do know? our part. We could do our point. part as well. That's a good point. Um, and try our best to be green and, and keep our kids healthy by... Uh, but it, but, 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 but it is one of those, you know, it's it's an urban dilemma that's particularly acute to Southern California. Mm -hmm. And they are on this incredibly ambitious building program. And you hope that once these buildings come up, I mean, this school across the street from us, which is basically Sunset and the Hollywood Freeway, as a physical thing, is a enormous. Yeah. Huge. Hopefully it'll be great. Huge, huge, huge. But, you know... The, well, we were all lucky to. I mean, your schools. You guys were just talking about your schools that you grew up to here. Were they were they freeway adjacent? As I'm. No, 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 not pretty, at all. Yeah. Lots of green space, probably yeah. in and around. Yeah. But my, my, my junior high, which was Emerson, and my high school, which was University High School, both, my, you know, you get little student cards? Mm -hmm. For whatever cosmic reason, my schools were both wildly under construction when I went there. My student <laughs> card is like a tractor. <laughs> and so I would, any, and so many LAUC kids know this, the bungalows with the good air conditioning. Yeah, but uh, all bungalows. Mm -hmm. Our next story here, online advertisers have dialed up a new way to get you to buy their products. 
This, this is interesting. They want to eavesdrop on your phone conversations. I'll explain how it works. Your Bay uh, Area company is called Pudding Media. Pudding. Designed an internet phone service that tracks your conversations online. Basically, they listen in. Keywords in your phone call will trigger related pop-up ads on your computer screen. So you're talking away. We're having a conversation, James, right. on the phone, and I'm talking about Coca-Cola. Boom! Coca-Cola comes up on my screen. Movie trailers or film reviews would suddenly appear. You get the idea. There's a filter to avoid pop-up ads linked to, how do you say, um, racier conversations? <laughs> um, <laughs> So the question is... Hey, James, is, are we going to meet at that lunch place again? <laughs> you know, that one off the... Okay. It, I mean, obviously, this is something that raises questions and concerns about, you know, the ever-blurring line of target advertising and securing your own personal privacy. You're sitting there having a conversation. Do you want to necessarily have a company eavesdropping on your phone conversation? The government already does it. Why not? <laughs> ah, right. how, much, how much is your cell phone bill? Uh, you know, I don't know. It's not much. So I, I got this little plan that makes you make sure I don't spend too much on it. I don't know. I mean, I don't mind it being out there. You know, I'm not going to use it personally, I don't think, because I like to be private. But right. And I don't like the spam stuff that comes on my email anyways. Does that make uh, you crazy? Anyways, so uh, I don't know if this is the thing for me, but I, don't, I appreciate it being out there. I've kind of gotten used to it. I, I, I use Gmail, yeah. and I've gotten real used to the fact that when I open up an email from one of my friends abroad, um, mm -hmm. and there will be an ad that will come up, just a little one, mm -hmm. that will say, you know, flights to wherever right. my friend might be. So that kind of helped me last night, because I was looking <laughs> for a flight. But, you know, I was saying earlier in the show when we first read this story on the early edition, is that, you know, you could easily kind of cheat your way through this, okay? Um, Yes, this she's is already how. figured it out. I've already figured it out. She's because you know, it. if you have like a lot, a lot of people nowadays have two two computers at home, and if you wanted to get those free phone calls, you could mandate one computer that would just be all about the ads, right. and then use the free phone and never have to check the computer in those right. ads if you wanted to. Yeah, but they would still listen to you. I, I, that's that's what seems is odd that, to me. Yeah, I guess. Yeah, no, you're listening right. on private calls. It's, it's like the old days when you'd you know call Party and line. say uh, yes, I'd like to call, and the <laughs> operator would be listening while you're. I'll connect you. Yeah. Oh, funny. Yeah. But maybe you, it's a good way to kind of say, um, you know, be on the phone and get the ads and, and, and movie trailers that you want to see right away as well. I don't know. Now, but, you, you, you know, it's, know. One, it's like, you know, how, whatever, 10, 30, 50, 80 bucks a month, everybody wants to save money. But well, I you get it for free. Yeah. But at a, a what cost? At what the cost? thing that's interesting, though, is that it, they won't, like, hang on. They won't log the conversations. They just listen oh, well, to nice. the yeah. Well, no, I mean, that I is a concern because suddenly if they can go back and say, well, on September 21st, James, you made a phone call to, right, right. you know, you, say, you, you said, hey, baby, 17 times. <laughs> <laughs> and that, uh, not that he would. And then baby fat like, ads started coming up. Uh, right. <laughs> All right, here's our next story. Women in their 20s who work full-time in some American cities have been earning higher wages than men in the same age range. Is this news? Really? That's Sugar according mamas. to a sociology professor yes. at yeah, Queens College yes. who analyzed 2005 census data. How does that play out among couples who are dating? One woman says a guy she was dating told her it made him uncomfortable that she made more money than he did. She says she liked him and they probably would still be dating if he hadn't had an issue with the fact that she earned more money. Although women often say it is men who have issues around the higher, higher salaries, sometimes it is the women who actually are mm -hmm. uncomfortable. We have a good cross-section of men and women here today. Why don't we take a, a minor poll, <laughs> ladies, gentlemen? It would ladies, never bother gentlemen. me for one second. <laughs> <laughs> Blue Ray, and would it, you don't care? A single moment? No. Uh... <laughs> It, it depends, you know, because I like to earn my own money, you right. know, and so I like to be able to, you know, treat us to things, stuff like that. So uh, I don't mind. Yeah. I don't but know. let's say, okay, 